Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd, where we have roller delays for days. Today we're going to be talking about the Markle Mar Set to Me LC. By the end of the video, I will be mispronouncing it, calling it Markle Mar instead of Markle Mar. My apologies, Dave. Um, so, real quick on this, I do have a video on the Set to Me L, which is this gun but with a fixed stock. This guy right here, obviously you can see the little different things on that. Um, but I have a kind of history and first impressions video, along with a short accessories video, along with a first time shooting impressions video. So I've got some information for you guys that have already seen that video. I've got some new information here. A lot of what you're going to be seeing is repeat stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, just bear with me. So, like I said, Mark Lamar, Set Me LC. What does Set Me stand for? I hate you guys. So, I need to quit buying Set Me's. I horribly mispronounced what Set Me stands for in my first video on this. And then I did it again in the Set Me C308 video, which is actually what you're supposed to be seeing today. But I'm just going to release that next month. I want to hurry and get this video out there because Mark Lamar is putting together putting together their last 125 kits for the LC. So I kind of want to hurry and get this video out there, expose it to as many of you as possible while you still have a chance to get one. But set me stands for, and I go over the top each time and I have to do it even more. Centro de Estudios Tecnicos de Materials Especiales. That's what set me stands for. I'm done buying set me's. This is my last one. All right, so our semi L here was developed to replace the where did I put it? The semi C, or as most of us Americans here know it as the C three o eight, which is this big boy right here, which is what HK would design their G three off of. And I know you guys haven't seen the video yet, but if you wanna, you know, go to the future, watch it, and then come back in time. This is what a solid handguard looks like. It's not jiggling around at all like the original one that uh, the original surplus one century put on there. So, getting rid of the 762 NATO and switching over to 556 NATO. Um, you know, Germany, they would make the HK33, which was basically a set me C or a G3. But with a shortened receiver, um, changed up the parts to make it work with 5.56. While this looks like a lot like an HK-33, they're going to have similar kind of aesthetics about it. This is not an HK-33. Um, now, that 33 design came from the G3, which came from Set Me. You know, these are the original guys on that, so there's inherently going to be a lot of similarities. But this definitely is a different rifle. Um, for example, this was the first and only um, roller delayed gun designed from the ground up for 5.56. You know, HK, they've got the MP5 and 9mm and the 33 and 5.56. But those were all like modified designs of the G3 or the Setme C, so those really don't count. Also, this is the last roller delayed gun to be issued widespread to any military so two cool factors there first and lasties on stuff development began in the late 70s um now i've seen several people mention that uh semi kind of already had the basic design of this lying around um looks like they kind of came up with a, a rough draft if you want to say didn't do any further development on it but then when they realized they really needed to switch over to 556 they kind of pull these designs out of storage and continue their development on them. Um, so the trials would be from 1981 to 1982. Um, I do not know if there were other guns included in these trials or if these were just simply to see if the L would hold up. Um, production would begin in 86. Um, it would then go into service the following year in 87. Um, and production would end in 1991 um, but the, it would stay in service until May 1999 when it re got replaced by the HK-36E, which is kind of ironic that an HK replaced it 
um, because like these were the grandfathers of the classic roller delay HK designs. But um, so this gun did not have the greatest reputation um, among the Spanish military. There's a couple of aspects of that. Um, one of them that I don't think I mentioned in the other videos, but it gets brought up a lot, it's definitely, it was a main issue, was all of the L's that were sold to the military, they were done as like kind of a government contract, a big lot that had to admit this, you know, dollar amount couldn't go over. And so apparently the quality control wasn't as good, the materials weren't as high quality as what the police were getting, because the police also purchased these. Um, and the police apparently were just buying them as units at a set price. Um, and so what they, they ended up getting better quality L's. So there's one issue, you know, that's, that's definitely going to hold it back, um, at least as far as for the military. Another issue they had was the ammo they were using was, from my understanding, was overpressured, and it was just really dirty ammo. Um, and so that cut it short. And now these will use, you know, the classic GI Stinag mags, but they did have their own magazine design, um, and that would be this here. It's a steel mag. You can see the follower is rather funky and the lists are kind of different. This has no bolt hold open, so the follower didn't need to worry about having that feature in there. These mags had a couple issues. One is just a weird design. If you just push up on this base plate, you know, I feel like you can get all kinds of debris and crud in there fairly easily. Um, and these were just produced like out of spec from one another. So they, they were just crappy mags to begin with, much like what we experienced in the US. If you have a mag that's from Parsons, Kansas, like it don't even want to fit in there. Ironically, this fits in the L rather nicely. Don't ask me why. If you're wondering, this is not the adventure line, which threw me off because I thought that's all that came out of Parsons, but this is the Parsons, Parsons Precision, Precision Products, um, which is way out of spec. So, you know, they weren't the only ones we had issues. This one was aluminum, not steel. Um, so, yeah, you can go to Parsons and go to Dwayne's Photo to get your Konochrome film, per, you know, developed. Well, I guess not anymore, um, but you definitely don't want to go there for these Macs. So, you know, we had issues, they had issues, they had really bad issues. They didn't make it in a 30 round. And a little 12 round mag here too. Supposedly there's a 20, but I've never seen pictures of it. I've never seen any listings for it. Um, and I think Mishiko kind of even brings up wondering its true existence. At the very least, they're, they're fairly rare. Um... So the magazine was another issue. There's lots of reports of um, the Spanish soldiers trying to get, you know, your standard good GI mags from coalition forces, uh, which of course was, you know, a big no-no for them to do. And they did work. Uh, Mark Lamar has done some things to kind of optimize the American GI mags to work in these better. So that was holding it back. Um, I've seen like one person talking about even the, the quality control in the barrels, apparently the chrome lining would flake off. Um, so yeah, got some issues there. And so it, like the gun design itself wasn't bad. It was just, it was poorly executed. And so I had a pretty short lifespan. That's why they got rid of it um, in 99. Okay, so the rate of fire is slightly different between the LC and the L. On the L, it is 600 to 750 rounds per minute. On the LC, it is 650 rounds to 800 rounds per minute. And I don't think that was necessarily put into the design of this gun. Um, this has a different bolt carrier and spring setup. Since the original L, the uh, recoil spring is like in the stock. Obviously, you got an issue there. So I think I just kind of, whoops, sorry guys. Hope no one's tripped over there. Um, I think that was just kind of a result of the, uh, the slightly different bolt carrier. So, real quick, I guess we'll just do a front to back. Now, before we do that, I gotta get into this real quick. In my first video I did on this, I bring up the speculation that there are actually two different models of LC. Um, I will say I haven't seen anyone else bring this up in any of the videos on this. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'm wrong. 
But it turns out I was right. I was onto something the whole time. So in the original, my first Markle Mara purchase, which is actually a Gen 1. I thought it was a Gen 2, but it's a Gen 1. The owner's manual is the version 1.0. They got this little picture here. Gives you a rundown of all the different, you know, models of L. Well, you'll notice right here is model LC. It has a full length barrel and also has a bayonet lug. And down here, we see the LC2, and that has the short barrel with no bayonet lug. So that's, excuse me, so that's why I was like, hold up. What Markle Mar is selling is actually technically an LC2. Um, but like I said, I couldn't really find any information on this, you know, other variation of LC. I oh, will just let it not be perfectly angled there. Okay. So, when I got the LC, which is a Gen 2, and came with this manual 2.0, it had a whole new LC section. And on page 35, up at the top here, we're talking about removing the blind pin. Okay, this extended flash hider was designed to look just like the original Set Me L barrel and flash hider, giving the LC the look of the original set me lc paratrooper version which featured the original 16 inch technically is 15.7 but who cares uh 16 inch barrel and the collapsible stock so i was correct ha 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 so that brings me up to another thing here let me get the original well, original the l since so the barrel actually stops right here this has a 12.5 or 12.6 inch barrel and then they've welded on this is all one piece of metal this is not a flash hider that's been screwed on this is all one piece of metal that's been welded on so therefore it becomes part of the barrel and as you can see it is a little bit shorter um than my you know set me l the markle mark set me l now, the reason being is this has a 16 inch barrel. The barrel has to be 16 inches or longer in the US. This flash hider is threaded on, therefore is not part, not part of the barrel. I haven't actually measured the barrel length. I haven't got like a dowel rod out to put it down to the bolt face, see exactly how long this is. But I feel like this could have been a little bit shorter because technically this right here is the end of the barrel or is up here, the end of the barrel, like somewhere up here. I feel like this could have been still a little bit shorter and still met the 16 inches. But what I think they did, I think I'm correct on that, but I bet this is the length of the original um, Set Me L, how, how it would be with that 15, you know, 0.7 inch um, barrel. So they're, they're going for that LC look, so they didn't want to make it look shorter than what the original LC would have looked like. And obviously you can see here too, the, uh, the shroud's a little bit thicker than the original profile here. They did use kind of the pencil barrel. Here it looks kind of like a heavy barrel. And that's led to some confusion on some websites that are selling these. Um, and also to people asking questions. I've seen someone say that all of the LCs come with a heavy barrel. Now, Markle Mar does offer a heavy barrel to purchase if you're putting a kit together yourself. If you're buying an L from them, I'm sure you can arrange for that heavy barrel to be put on the L from the get-go. Um, and this kind of has that profile um, of the heavy barrel, but it's simply an extension. It's not a heavy barrel. That's not what it is. Um, I do also kind of like that Markle Mar has still retained these lugs here, the original. And when I'm saying original, I don't mean original set me. I'm just talking about the L. I wish I had an actual set me L. Um, these lugs here were for the clamp on um, bipod. And this little gas ring here was for the uh, rifle fired grenades. So they still matched the uh, that three lug profile. So here's your expandable uh, bipod. It just clamps on there. Got kind of a bushing in there, so you got a little bit of pivot and play. So that's pretty nice. They didn't bo bother with that ring, obviously, because you know we're not going to be firing any grenades off of it. 
Um, while we're on that subject, though, the LC did still have an option to fire grenades. And just like my ally did purchase one of the, uh, there's a guy on eBay that's selling the uh, straight up translated owner's manual for these, the original Spanish owner's manual. He's translating them to English, offering them. They're pretty cheap. I want to say it's like 15 bucks or something. So I got one for my L. Um, if you guys are curious, there's who you need to contact. Like I said, he is on eBay. There's what the original Spanish LC manual cover looked like. But, 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 it did have this little grenade launcher, and it's for freaking hand grenades. Um, I'm pretty sure I read that on here. Yeah, hand grenades. Holy frack. Boy, I hope you don't have a misfire. <laughs> um, so, I thought that was interesting. So, they still have the option to fire grenade, use a different attachment. And as you can see here, it is missing the bayonet lug. Um, now, I do not believe these were unique designed front sight post for the LC, but they did get pulled off the line before some other finishing moves got done to it because, and I'm not the only one to bring this up, but I got to point out to you. You can see here we got a little relief cut. That's for the bayonet little latching mechanism to lock into. But you can see on this one that recess was never cut in there. So they probably pulled these off the line before they did that extra bit of milling. They went in over to another line where this got that bayonet look removed and then thrown onto an LC. In a case I didn't show you, there's that little spot weld that you remove if you do all the paperwork to actually get it as an SBR. Got a front sling swivel attachment up here. It kind of rotates um, to the top, then a little bit, you know, to the right side, just a little bit below. Um, these came with slings. I didn't grab one out here. Has your kind of classic HK style buckle on the front. As a matter of fact, they're the same slings that were used on the Setney C. And then up front, we do have our first takedown pin. And in most of my videos I do on these, I go on a short pin rant, so I might as well do it here too. If you're using a sling, put your pin in the direction that you see here, where that's, you know, the back of it. It's not gonna go in any further. That's the front, where if something did get pushed up here, it could possibly get pushed out. The reason I say you shouldn't install it like this is if you have a sling on here, that big old buckle is gonna be pushing up on there. Also, if you're really OCD and you don't want to do any damage to this, um, you know, like scratch it up or anything, do not put a sling on here at all. Um, Mark Lamar, I don't think I mentioned this yet, they bought 10,000 Set Me L kits. Of those 10,000, um, he said he's able to make 5,000 Set Me Ls um, and 640 LC. So only 640 of these they're putting out. Um, now, of course, like Ian from Forgotten Weapons mentions how he had an LC parts kit and he sent that into Mark Lamar um, and they put it together for him and he got it back. Um, so that's going to mess with that 640 number. Um, did I say 640 and 650? I meant 640. Um, and then, of course, you're also going to have the people that did buy kits themselves and are building them um, themselves. And in case you do have an LC kit, you do not need a special LC receiver. The receiver is just your standard set me L receiver. The only thing they changed is the uh, bolt carrier, the whole recoil spring um, assembly and location of it, um, and then the inside of your charging handle extension. So pretty much the outside is the same other than the buttstock. Another thing unique on the LC is Mark Lamar has changed a bunch with these and kind of upgraded them. Now this is something I had missed on my original videos. I just recently learned that Mark Lamar actually changed out the front sight post. So on this one here, they changed out the front sight post. They even retapped it. It's a different thread pitch. Um, so if you have like a Hill and Mac or a home build, you can't just simply buy one of these Mark Lamar front sight post. It will not thread in properly. Um, and you got like, see we got four little uh, holes to use to rotate it. It's got kind of this tension um, pin that pushes up on it, uh, which made me a little finicky, but I've I've pushed on that quite a bit. It, it's not moving. And that's a fairly thin front side post. The reason they did that is 
the original sent me front sight posts. And since then, I've seen people say they have two sizes, fat and thin. Um, and the fat ones, I've seen a comparison picture. It's, it's fat. It's thick. Um, so I emailed Dave because I was curious because I wanted to tell you guys, like, are all of them going to be the thin front sight post? Like I got lucky on with this one. You know, that's not bad at all. Um, and he replied back with, um, actually, there is not just two different sizes of front sight posts, but he said going through all the kits that they came across four different front sight post sizes. Why they had that many, I have no clue. Um, but he did mention that the fattest one in there was just completely useless, you know. And from the picture that I saw, I imagine that was the fat one because it looked completely useless. But he did say on all of the LCs, they are using the thinnest um, front sight post that they found. So if you do get one of these LCs, now you're at least going to get a decent, decent front sight post. You also notice you have two little locking notches there, and this little pin here is not really a tension pin anymore, but it locks into that little notch. So that is original. The other thing, I don't know how well it's shown up on camera. There, you can see it pretty well. When I went to the gun shop or my FFL to pick this up, and I saw that front sight post, that different color, I, I'm going to be honest, I was kind of pissed. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't terribly worried. I knew that, from what I heard from others, Mark Lamar has a really good customer service. They respond quickly. Um, I felt pretty confident that I would be able to get this issue resolved. So that night, I was like, you know what? Let me watch some videos and look at some pictures of these green set me L's and see if I'm the only one. And I'm definitely not. Most of them are like that. There, I found a few pictures where they look like they matched 100%. But once again, it all has to do with lighting. So at the gun shop, when I opened up the soft case, it no longer comes in a cardboard box with foam cutouts. It actually comes in a nice gun case. I'll try to show that at the end if I remember. But it looks like a very, very light, almost spearmint green. And I was kind of like, ah, you know, that kind of sucks. But no big, you know, it wasn't a big, you know, letdown. I would have been fine with any color. Um, so then I got it home and pulled it out. And I was like, huh. It, let's see. It kind of, yeah, it, well, maybe it looked a little bit darker than what's, what's showing up on my screen right now. It almost looks like that experiment. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, that's not bad. And then later at night when I turned off the ceiling light and went to the lamp, I looked at it and it was right next to the lamp. And this looked really dark brown. Like this thing is just a chameleon, almost like if you're looking at it straight on, it'll look like one color, then at the angle, it slightly changes the color. Um, so one of the big debates about the Mark Lamar's was did they get the color of green correct or not? I think a lot of that has to simply do with like I originally suspected, the lighting, the kind of camera use, the settings on the display that you're watching it on. I feel like that plays into it a lot. Um, Let's see, uh, Michiko does a Hill and Matt comparison with his set me's. He also has a set me L. And the set me L's, the green look almost the exact same as the Hill and Mac, but they're just a little bit more glossy. These kind of have a little more of a shine than the Hill and Mac ones. Um, and so I was like, man, why didn't I get a dark green one like that? And then like looking in certain lights, I'm like, oh, this is a dark green one like that. And then I watched that video again and noticed his serial number. This is less than 80 units newer than the one that he had. So once again, I think it's just all the same freaking color. However, this is a Gen 2. When they switched to the Gen 2s, um, Mark Lamar's always Cerakoted the L's, but they, I don't know what grade of Cerakote they were using before, but they switched up to the Elite Cerakote on the Gen 2s. So I don't know if maybe that plays into it a little bit as well, because um, another YouTuber, I'm hesitant to mention, because a lot of people hate him right now, he may have imported some Dragonovs from Hungary, and then there may or may not have been a list to get on, and he didn't honor it. I don't even know if it was his list. Hey, I'm not going to get into that. You know who I'm talking about now. Um, he had a comparison on the Hill and Mac and Mark Lamar, kind of showing the differences. And he does his video outside using natural light, and the Mark Lamar looks like a spearmint green next to the Hill and Mac. You know? Um, so... First gen, second gen, Hillamac, that might play into it a little bit. I think a lot of it is simply just the color and the angle that you're seeing that color. So, um, we have our sling swivel. I already brought that up. This is my second run through on the video. I almost finished it the first time, so I'm kind of like, did I, did I mention that the second time or was that from the first time? I hate myself sometimes. 
Um, got a left side charging handle, just like on your classic HKs. One thing that's kind of neat, you know, my black one, I knew that this is how they were, but I got the black, so the, the little covers there were black. But now that I have the green one, the little covers are green. Kind of neat. Um, also, I noticed something cool that I've not seen mentioned on any other videos on the set else, so I've got some unique information on you. Yes, there are two, count them, one, two different heat shields for the 70L, and it's a really small and almost difference that doesn't matter. So, on the first L I got, the Gen 1, we have an ever so slight lip right there. It kind of flares out just a little bit at the end. And I've looked around, and I've seen several videos that have these on there. They all seem to be on the L. I've not seen any LCs that have it on there, but also I'm watching videos and looking at pretty crappy resolution pictures, so it's not the easiest to tell. I'm going to assume that that's the earlier heat shield. But then what appears to be on all of the LCs and some Ls, see that lip is now gone. So I'm just assuming that they just kind of got rid of that process. It wasn't really needed. Save a little bit of time on production maybe. Um, so yeah. There's my exclusive information. Don't I feel cool? Um, also do want to point out, in case anyone saw that, we got a good little nick right there. I do not think this came from Mark Lamar. I think this is how this kit showed up. It doesn't look like that's happened in shipping or anything. So, wanted to point that out. I That's not a Mark Lamar. These are surplus kits. That's to be expected. Charging handle while we're on that. While it is much like the HK, you know, the HK pullback, and then you twist up to lock it in place. And as you can see, it's a tubular, and I can't twist it. So what we do have is a bolt hold open button right there. And that takes a little bit of finesse to get used to. I always push that forward. You don't have to. Um, so now your bolt's held open. You can either close it by hitting the opposite button of that bolt release. It'll stick out. And once you hit that, you can close the bolt. Or... Sorry about hitting you guys. The other thing you need is to take that charging handle, pull back, and let go. That will also work. Um, one thing to point out, the welds on these, um, they're no joke. Mark Lamar did a really good job on the welds to the point that if you're trying to get 100% historically accurate, they did too good of a job on the welds. Um, they're done much better than what you see on the actual military uh, surplus ones. For example, our trinian weld, on the originals it just would have been a little spot weld, a little spot weld, and the Hill and Max reproduced that. Um, I mean, I don't think they did it to cut corners, that's just how they originally were done. But Mark Lamar, you know, they got on a thick. Um, so, quite a bit, I mean, it's definitely not bad. I'm just noticing these little lines right there from the stock. I don't think I have a Q-tip handy. I think that's just grease, so, and not scratches. Yeah, that wiped right up. So just in case you saw that and you're curious, it's wiped up, it's just grease. Close this freaking stock so it's easier to handle. Um, another thing, these little lines here on the Hill and Mac versions, um, they're a little more defined. Now, whether that's more historically accurate to the originals, I have no clue. So I'm not sure who got that right. Um, I really like how Mark Lamar, their MCM logo, they kind of mixed it in with the Set Me, the Gear and Sword logo and color filled that. The originals um, would have the sword and gear and color filled as well. Um, the Hill and Mac ones do not. It's just they're kind of like, they have like a triangle logo and it's not color filled. And I'm not trying to pick on Hill and Mac owners. I'm just, if you're thinking about getting one, you're trying to decide between a Mark Lamar and a Hill and Mac. That's why I'm pointing all these out. I'm trying to compare it with original surplus and your one other buying option. Another thing you will notice is we've got two little welds over here, which would not be on the original. They are also not on the Hill and Mac. It's the way that Mark Lamar had designed this trigger pack. You know, they had to design it in a way that you can't just take the surplus one and pop it in there and then have select fire. You gotta appease the ATF. And then because of that, there's also another little spot weld on this side. Hill and Mac went a different route. Um, and so they do not have those little spot welds in there. Excuse my belching. 
the uh, markings, Mark Lamar really did a good job on this. Why is that in takedown? Okay. Um, Mark Lamar did a really good job on copying these. Hill and Mac, they're not horrible. It's just, um, I think the font and the size is a little off. Also, the, the stampings, from what I've seen, they don't look like they're very deeply pressed in there. I've yet to see a Hill Mac color filled. Once you color fill it, it might make all the difference in the world. Um, or they might be kind of the pain in the butt to color fill because they don't look like the cleanest um, stampings on there. But like, I'm, I'm just nitpicking here. So the original uh, military ones, this is how this would look minus it saying set me L. It would simply just say set me. Your model number would be over here. Or on all the Markle Mars, they just simply say set me L. And if you're wondering what ET stands for, um, you guys can't even see that. If you're wondering what E, so, so there's your logo, all the roll marks. The original one would be just be minus the L behind the set me. Um, but if you're wondering what ET stands for, um, that stands for extraterrestrial. Just kidding. Um, I wrote it down, got it somewhere. <sighs> Thought I wrote it down. Okay, no, no, I did. Um, so the Spanish army is the, god dang it. Okay, Spanish viewers, I apologize. I'm not making fun of you, I promise. I flunked out of Spanish. That was the last class in Kansas that a language wasn't required, so I got lucky. The Spanish army translated, well, not translated, but in Espanol and mispronounced is Ejercito de Tiria. Tiria, Tiria. E.T., 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 and translated, that means army of the land or army of the ground. I've seen some people refer to saying it means earth army. It basically just means, you know, the army. So I guess not the air force or navy. So that's what the ET stands for. And then, of course, depending on what model you get, it'll either say L, LC, or LV. You have your fire and safe, which are color filled. Now, obviously, on the original surplus ones, it would not say S and F because that's English, kids. Now, the uh, Hill and Mac did get the um, the lettering over here correct. There, it's not Once again, it's not color filled, but you can do that. Um, but they did get the lettering correct. So safe would actually be an S. Um, the F would be a T, which would also be semi-automatic. And then there would be an additional spot below it for R for fully automatic. Shoo. Sure. There's that bit for you. Another thing Mark Lamar has done to modify these, um, they did mess with the rear sights and they do um, do this on the LCs as well. So on the rear sights on the L, you have 200 meter and 400 meter. On the original sights, the whole, there's a little peep sight in here that whole simply changes its position, its, its elevation. What Mark Lamar did is they went through here in the 200 meter sight, they went ahead and widened up that peep a little bit. And I'm glad they did. I mentioned this before. That 400 meter peep is freaking small. So when I went to pick this up, I had a buddy with me. And he was checking out. And he looked down the sights and it was to that 200 meter setting. And he was like, ooh. He's like, I don't know if I like these sights. And I just kind of flipped it down. I was like, try it now. He's like, okay, yeah, they're good. <laughs> so, I mean, it is a small hole. Another small thing is the original ones, once again, would be color filled. Mark Lamar did not bother to color fill that and they removed the color fill because all the original parts that they used, they did clean and completely um, refinish. Um, so you lose that color fill. You can color fill it yourself. <laughs> the, I don't know if it's the smoothness of the metal or the finish that they put on the metal there. Um, I kind of did it. <laughs> it came out a little bit kind of smudgy. Um, but yeah, so there we go. There's that. So if you do want to do that, my method is I just take some fingernail polish. Um, you know, raid your girlfriend's or your wife's, uh, makeup counter, go through the nail polish. If she doesn't have the right color, like I ran into, you can kindly ask her to take you to Walmart and then she will very loudly comment, oh, that green will look beautiful with your eyes and crap like that and embarrass you in front of all customers. Um, but yeah, to take some nail polish, goop it on there. I let it dry. Some people don't even bother letting it dry. And then you're going to want to get, pay attention closely, non-acetone nail polish remover. 
Now, don't go there and see some acetone nail polish remover and be like, oh, that's what Brandon Kostner said to get. No, I did not. I said to get non-acetone nail polish remover. The non-acetone nail polish remover is going to be safe on most metal finishes, not paint, as I discovered with my Vepr. Um, but the, the non-acetone is going to be good on most like bluing surfaces. Um, the acetone will definitely strip your stuff off. So just so you know, there, there's lots of videos you guys can go and watch about that. The other thing Mark Lamar did is this little drum adjustment for the windage on the side. The originals, um, according to Mark Lamar, were just junk. They, they broke very easily. And I think it was just easier for them, especially to make sure that all their kits got one of these, was just to make a new design, fix the design. Kind of, they, they fixed a lot on this gun. Fix that design and make it to where it's more robust and it's going to work and last. And the Hill and Mac ones do have the original little drum thing on there. Now, I don't think that they're necessarily fragile as far as like, if, if you're watching this and you have one of the original ones on there, I don't want you to be scared to adjust your windage. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue was like actually out in the field, you know, if you should drop this rifle and a rock should land on it and hit that part, it's probably going to break. Um, so, yeah. This also does have a little flared uh you know brass deflector thing there um the hill and mac ones do not have that it was just kind of a cost cutting feature they did and when i first looked at these that was one of the first things i noticed is the hill and macs did not have those and like i was just kind of like no i'm not even gonna look at those anymore i'll spend a little bit more and get the mark lamar but then like i looked into the mark lamar and saw all the other things they did and i was just like well that's just now a no-brainer um i mean it's not needed you know it just kind of helps deflect your shells as the name would you know tell you um and you, your shells are still going to hit your receiver like this one here i haven't put a whole bunch of rounds through it but you can see you know it's still it's hitting the receiver down here so it's not going to save your receiver you just might not get any marks back here um maybe without it you'll get kind of more of a random array of location of marks um but that's not a big deal and actually honestly now like i remember looking at this and be like these just look goofy without that flare on there. And now I look at the Hill and Mac ones, and I don't know what it is. I guess it's all about, you know, wanting what you can't have. But I'm just kind of like, those lines without the flare just kind of look neat for some reason. I don't know what my problem is. So, and just in case, jump around quite a bit, the bayonet, in case you were wondering what that looks like. That's this here. They're not too hard to find. Prices all, are all over the place. I managed to get two and kind of pick the best uh, of sheath and blade. And I think I, for both of those, I think I paid like between 30 and 40. I seen them going for like 80 to 120. So unless like it's in pristine condition, I don't know if I would pay that much. So just be on the alert for that. And like I said, this is our bolt hold open. When it's holding your bolt open, this side will push out. You're not even in camera. This is your bolt hold open. Um, when it's holding the bolt open, this will push out, and then that is your bolt release button. One of the weirdest questions I've gotten on these semi L's, which blows my mind, I've only had like maybe three people ask me this. But in you know my groups of friends, you know, I'm like, hey, check out this cool gun, and they look at it and they're like, wow. And a lot of these people, you know, shoot guns themselves. Actually, I think all three of these people that mentioned this said this, <laughs> shoot guns themselves. But like within like a few seconds of handling this very interesting looking gun, all three of them are like, well, what is that for? <laughs> what the hell is it about this freaking hole that draws, draws people right to it? And in case you're wondering, um, that is, apparently there's a pin in there somewhere, um, but that's how you remove your charging handle. You gotta take this off, you gotta get a little special tool. And then you know, I think you like kind of have to hammer it out from underneath in a very awkward manner. Um, your magazine release, you know, I knocked the uh, the set me C because the magazine release is set up perfectly for ET length fingers. I just ruined that joke, so remember to haven't released that video yet. Oh well, um, this one's a little better. You know, if I had really long fingernails, I might be able to hit it. But my hands are kind of small, so that might not be too bad for most of you. And here's our trigger housing pin. Once again, I think it's pretty obvious which direction you should have that pin in. You know, because if you miss this and you're going up here, you don't want to be pushing that pin out. So put this in the opposite direction of what I told you to put the handguard pin in. 
while Ron at the Sydney owner manual as well as the Merkelmore owner manual, they don't say anything about the directions of the pan. They're unidirectional. Looking at pictures of the Spanish military with these, there's a few pictures that are high enough resolution enough where I can see that they're putting this pin in backwards. Man, if I was like a sergeant or something <laughs> up in the Spanish military, I'd be writing people's asses about that pin. Um, and then, yeah, we went over the marks. Safety selector, like I said, you know, it's right there. It's not too bad, but it's very, very stiff. Um, then we have our butt sock. You got two pins in here. I crisscross those just that way. If I have something push up on one side, at most, it's going to dislodge one pin, but not the other. Some of the things Mark Lamar has done to this, um, they have changed up all of the springs on these. Now, not only have they changed out the springs for nice new springs, um, but they also changed the weight of them. So they've kind of have retuned this gun. Now in, I feel like this was two videos. One of them, I want to say it was like one of the main ones I watched. I went back trying to find this before I called them out on it. Um, but I, I couldn't find it. So I don't know if I imagined it. So I'm not even gonna name drop it because I might be wrong. But I have heard this from some videos I've seen where they say, you know, Mark Lamar replaces all the springs on these except for the LC due to the rarity. Now the recoil spring on this is um, actually quite a bit different than what the original one, because the original one's going all the way in the butt stock. The original one is kind of lined up with the middle of the bolt carrier and the bolt carrier has a tail that it locks into. Whereas this bolt carrier has no tail, the recoil spring is actually moved from the middle up to the top um, it's got a kind of a hollowed out section up top where it sits in. Um, so it sits more forward than the original one did. It's also shorter than the original one. And the original one also has an additional buffer spring on it or this one does not have a buffer spring. Um, so I've seen some people are saying that the LCs will have the original springs just because the rarity and obviously they're unique to the LC. Well, the recoil spring, your trigger spring and all that jazz is going to be the same. So I wanted to find out on that one particular because that one was very interesting to me. Um, so I reached out to Mark Lamar and Dave got back with me. So this is from Dave to me. This isn't me watching an interview with someone else and I'm quoting them. This is straight from Dave's mouth. Well, straight from Dave's email that he sent me um, when I asked him if the LCs did not get any of their springs replaced or was it just the recoil spring or what's the deal? He said on the LC, indeed, all of the springs have been replaced and upgraded minus that little front post spring, the, little, the one that's holding the detent up. That's the only spring they didn't replace for obvious reasons. There's no need to. So the recoil spring in here is new. It is one of the Mark Lamar ones. So you're going to get those advantages of the gun just being better than what the Spanish military had. So that part made me happy. Um, Let's see, let me grab my notes, see what all I've missed. Blah, 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 mentioned that, mentioned that. Um, oh, the barrel, so, who, I think it was Clayco47. That's another one, he's got quite a few videos on this too, so definitely check those out. Um, he, he's not a set me guy, you know, so he, I think he said that this had a, he either said that this has a one in 12 twist rate on the rifling, or that the originals had a one in 12 twist rate, which neither one did. Um, so the original ones, uh, yeah, so the original, and this is another thing I brought up too, I wasn't sure if the original barrels were cold, hammer forged. Since then I've realized I'm pretty sure if, to meet like the NATO specs, like I think it does have to be cold, hammer forged and chrome light. I might be wrong on that. Guys, feel free to correct me. Um, so I wasn't sure if the originals were cr uh, cold, hammer forged. I have since found out, yes, indeed, the original ones were indeed cold hammer forged, um, and they had a six right hand grooved one in seven twist. Um, I don't know the rifling if groove, if, if that's the same, if that's the standard for 5.56, I'm an AK guy myself, but I do know that the Mark Lamar ones um, do still have that one in seven twist. Um, they are not chrome lined, they have a nitride finish, which is just fine with me. Um, so there's that. Trigger pull, trigger pull, trigger pull. So the trigger pull on my Set Me L was nothing to write home about and neither is this one, no surprise, it's the same thing. 
Now I did pull the, uh, I did test the trigger pull on my Semi L, the fixed stock one. I believe I did that after I took it out to the range twice. So it had a little bit of break, and I, you know, I imagine the trigger's gonna loosen up at least a little. Um, so after I took it out twice, I can't remember how many rounds I ended up shooting through it. It was like 250 or 350. Feel free to watch my video. Um, but that trigger pull, the average after five pulls was six pounds, four ounces. So it's exactly what you'd expect from a military trigger. Um, nothing to write home at, at all about. But it is a very smooth trigger. It doesn't feel very gunky. It's got a short reset. It's got a you know, fairly clean break. Um, you know, other than that, it's a decent trigger. It's just, it's not the lightest. So I went ahead and did the trigger pull on this one too. Keep in mind, um, I just recently got this. I have not had a chance to take this out to shoot yet. But the trigger pull on this one was six pounds, 14 ounces. So I'm pretty sure once I shoot about 250 rounds through it, the trigger pull is probably gonna lighten up by 10 ounces. So we'll see, I'll eventually spit out another video on this. Um, some things worth noting, the Spanish Star M28 looks freaking sexy next to this. I mean, look at that. Like if Arnold Schwarzenegger was a Spanish commando, this is his loadout right here. Now, the military was not the only one to use the LC. The, uh, I don't know if it'd be the police or the border guards. You see a lot of pictures of them. They kind of look like they're in a police type uniform. Um, but they use these quite a bit as well. So if they were using them, they're gonna have the Spanish BM. Unfortunate name, wonderful gun. Um, I do have a video on both of these guns in case you're curious. Um, but there's, you know, good little side actions there. All right, so I want to show you some things. First of all, so you know, I'm not just talking trash on Parsons. This is, like I said, it wasn't the Adventure line, but the Pre Precision products. You know, it's a little stiff, which all these mags are, but it goes in there fine. Now, check this out. I know I already did this, didn't I? Or is that my first video? I don't know. Like it. I mean, it'll go in there if I really freaking jam it, but holy hell. Now, I do have one of the Adventure Line Parsons mags, and it fits in there much better, which is good. And that earlier reference, if you guys are wondering, you should go check out uh, Kona Chrome on Netflix. It's all about uh, guys driving to Dwayne's Photo in Parsons to get some Kona Chrome film developed. And in case you're wondering, yes, Dwayne's Photo is a real Photoshop in Parsons. And yes, they were the last Photoshop to have Kona Chrome, or the, the chemicals for Kona Chrome film. This is the original semi mag, like I was telling you about, 30 and 12. Now, Mark Lamar, hates these mags the gen 1 set me l's basically they may or may not fit the original set me max um i assumed i had a gen 1 set me l because i could get these to fit in there just fine i never ran this one but i did run this one once or twice and it ran fine um then I, later on i found out that no that actually is a gen 1 and that uh, basically some Gen 1s may fit the original mags and some may not, but also goes for the Lancer mags because I was able to get a Lancer mag in here as well. The easiest way to tell if you have a Gen 1 or Gen 2, you ain't gonna see nothing. There's little relief cuts on the bottom of the bolt carrier. So there'll be a groove, and then the Gen 2s have an extra groove. I'll eventually just do a video. I Disassembling these is a pain in the butt, and I don't do editing. Not because I'm not skilled at it, but because I'm lazy and I don't want to. So, um, But they do have little relief cuts in there on the Gen 2s. My understanding is that just kind of help make room for these lips. Um, and I did kind of notice it was crushing them a little bit on my Lancer. So that's another thing I, I need to bring up when I started realizing, questioning what Gen my L was. I had purchased another Lancer mag. And I put it in my fixed stock set me L, which I now know is a Gen 1. And I went to go close the bolt, and the bolt did not close. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? So I went to go kind of rack the, uh, you know, the charging handle again, and then it did close. You know, and I opened and closed the bolt a few more times, and it was functioning fine to pop the uh, mag out, which is over.
over here. I couldn't find the smoke one I did this on, but here's my clear one. It's hard to tell, but these lids here kind of pushed down. Um, and so I think it was kind of crunching a little bit. I mean, it still functioned fine. Um, so then I was like, well, hold on. What, you know, what freaking model do I have? So once again, I emailed Mark Omar. I was like, here's my serial number. How do I know what gen I have? And Dave just responded back simply enough saying, you know, easiest way to do is look for those relief cuts. And you can look online. I had seen those relief cuts before. I didn't realize they're directly connected to the Gen 2. I thought it was just like further evolution of Markle more fine-tuning stuff. But yeah, the Gen 2s, you got the Elite Cerakote. The Magwell dimensions have been changed slightly so that you will be more easily able to get these Set Me L mags in there as well as Lancers um, and a kind of a wider range of American GI mags. And then they also put those relief cuts in there to help kind of accommodate those bigger mags. Like I said, though, the Gen 1s, it, it may work, um, but the Gen 2s definitely will. And like I said, um, Mark Lamar, or Dave, does not like these mags. You know, he's he's been like their junk. Don't even use them. And the only reason, and I will agree with him, but the only reason I have them is just simply because, like, the historical uniqueness. You know, I want to, I'm not necessarily going to run them, but I at least wanted to have some on hand, and especially now, like, while well, you can get them. You know, who knows, these might end up being hard to find. Um, I think Apex actually came out with a video talking about how you can put in a um, hex mag uh, follower in these. I guess the Magpul anti-tilt mags will not fill, I'm imagining because this is steel. But um, apparently the, uh, the hex mag followers will and i've got two hex mags i'm tempted to kind of sacrifice them another thing that dave from mark Omar pointed out he's like these are complete junk but then he's like well these aren't actually half bad apparently these tended to be a little more in spec um and he did say the main problem with these is a lot of them will only load 10 rounds will not load 12 and he said yeah, sometimes you'll find listings um for a 10 round mag and then sometimes it'll be mentioned as a 12 round mag and he was telling me he's like it's all the same mag he's like there is no 10 um, it, it's all that 12 round. It's just some of them you can only get 10 rounds in. And I mean, I've always followed the directions. I've underloaded these by two, just, you know, if I had any malfunctions, I'm still, you know, these guns are still fairly new to me. If I had any malfunctions, I want to make sure it wasn't over something I did. Let's go ahead and put in the original mag so y'all can see what that looks like. Um, another thing worth noting, um, like, uh, I think it was the Clayco 47 video. He's got a Gen 1, and he tried to put in one of these Sentinel mags. It wouldn't even fit in the mag well. Um, that's not just because it was a Gen 1. Like I said, these mags were made out of spec from one another. There are reports of Spanish soldiers having that same issue with their original L's. So it's, it's, it's just the mag. They are not the best mags. So, you know, get a newer mag. Um, oh, crime, any other thing worth pointing out? So my Gen 1 came with an okay industries mag has a little cage cut on there i did add the little magpole ranger plate the newer one i'm guessing this is the same for all gen 2s actually came with a duramag speed which is a c products mag which my understanding i think it's it's still technically an okay mag you know obviously some different markings on there i do like the bright orange follower i've always been a fan of the brightly colored followers this one just had a gray. Um, this has kind of more of a matte. The OK Industries has more of a matte finish. This has a little more of a smoother, slicker finish. Um, I mean, they they both feel fine. I don't think there's any huge differences in them. But just so you know, the new ones, apparently they are no longer coming with the OK mags. But with the, uh, the, the C-Spec, Speed, DuraSpeed, whatever they're called, mags, which, like I said, I mean, I think they're all, they still come out of the same factory. No big deal there, but, you know, go to your uh, local flea market, and you can find some nice used GI mags. And, I mean, when they're beat up like this, to me, that's just, it's freaking hot, man. Um, Other things worth mentioning, the original furniture, uh, Mark Lamar, 
I don't think I mentioned that on this. They did put all new furniture on here. Now they match. The design is very, very close match, extremely close match. For the originals, I do have a video that really gets down to the nitty gritty of breaking all that down. The downside of the original stuff, it's not as durable. Um, it's kind of decaying over time. And it's not very common to get them where all three are the same color. They are very commonly mismatched. Even looking at photos, you will see that. Whereas the Markle Mark stuff is gonna be matched. It's a much better quality, more durable. Now I will say obviously, the buttstock on the LC is original. However, they did change out the uh, the butt pad for the nice smoother Mark Lamar butt pads. The original were kind of a glossy black, smooth, and they are the exact same butt pad from the fixed stock to the, uh, the collapsing one though. And these, I mean, there's no spring in them at all whatsoever. They're pretty, pretty rock solid now. Another thing, if you did want to put on the surplus furniture, a lot of people are very concerned about 922R compliance. Now the Hill and Max, you might notice, they do, um, they have all the original furniture on there. They have the original butt stock, original pistol grip, original foregrip. The reason they are able to do that is because the Hill and Mac ones use a American made copy of the Setney flash hider. So the flash hider on the Hill and Mac ones is US made and that gives them enough points to use the full um, surplus stock set. Now in your standard Mark Lamar Semi L where you have the fixed butt stock, um, if you're wanting to stay in 922R compliance, um, since the Mark Lamars do have the original flash hider on them, you can change out two of the stock bits. So you can change out the butt stock and the pistol grip or the pistol grip and the foregrip or the foregrip and the butt stock, whatever, if you're wanting to stay in 922R. Um, I really don't think the ATF is going to be too concerned on you though. But if you're concerned about that, um, so that's kind of one of the, the downsides of the Malcolmars. I've seen like at least one person go, like, oh, I want to use surplus furniture and I don't want to break the law. It's like, you're not breaking the law. No one's concerned. Um, but technically since it has the original flash hider on it, you can only change out two of those stock pieces. Now you'll notice on here, obviously we do have the original, um, butt stock on here cause it's clutching. You kind of have to. But don't be concerned that, oh, now I can only change out the pistol grip or now I can only change out the handguard because these do not use the original flash hider. This right here is all one piece and it's all made in the US of A. Um, so that means you can put on a full surplus stock set. You already got the butt stock. All you'd have to do now is change the pistol grip and the foregrip and you are still within 922R compliance as long as you're using a US made mag. So just for you 922R nuts out there, there you go. You're still good there. Um, yeah, I think that is finally it. Ooh, just under an hour, guys. I was hoping for that. That makes me happy. Um, so like I said, the semi Ls, maybe not the LC, but rather the the L, the fixed stock one. They're they're not a bad buy right now, guys and gals. Um, it's a very unique gun. Once again, don't make fun of my Bushnell Red Dot. I got uber duper cheap. Um, it's a unique gun. It's really freaking fun to shoot. Now, I mentioned in my original video, if you're wanting something that's awesome and, you know, just super accurate and you've got 1200 bucks to spend, this probably isn't the best choice. You can get a better gun for this price. Well, maybe before COVID. Um... These prices have not gone up with COVID. You know, 2019 and 2020, 2021, the prices on anything gun related have been crazy and skyrocketing and inflated. The prices on these have never changed. It's a good investment. It's a fun gun. Um, Mark Lamar is making 5,000 of the L. Hill and Mac, I've seen different numbers. They've made anywhere from 1,500 to like 2,000. And then you have a handful of home builds. Not a common gun at all. Um, I see these going up in value. You know, yeah, you can buy it today and you can get one from three different online realtors, um, realtors, retailers. Um, but five years down the road, I would be very surprised if the price of these have not gone up. Now then, 
on another note, I've been suspicious of uh, Markle Mar getting ready to do something. Nothing bad. Um, and I was going to bring that up in this video. Kind of try to jam all everybody up in there. Um, especially with them making pins. And I was like, are these guys getting ready to go into full-on production of the L once they run out of parts kits? Something I've been personally speculating. I have no insider information. And, you know, I've never asked them that. And that same guy that pissed off a whole bunch of people by uh, selling very expensive Hungarian Dragonovs put out a video like maybe three days before me filming this right now, which you'll see a week later. Um, it's, it's a video like on underappreciated guns or something like that. And he brings up the Set Me L. I don't know where he got his information from, if they told him, if he's speculating. It sounded like he was given a pretty solid answer. But according to him, he has been told by Mark Lamar that they will be gearing up to go into full-on production of the Set Me L. Um, now, some people that have already purchased, this, purchased these might be like, oh, man, crap, you know, now my price is going to go down. Or, you know, or my price isn't going to go up as soon as I want. You know, a lot of people will buy these guns just like to watch the, the value of it go up. I really don't think that's going to affect these too much. Um, you know, because all in all with the L's, we're around like, what, 8,000 um, built off surplus parts kits. And then we'll get a whole bunch that are, you know, completely brand new made. I mean, the ones with the surplus parts kits always go for more. Look at the Wasser. You know, I forget the technical terms of them. But the Wasser that's made from actual surplus parts kits go for more than the, you know, commercial purpose-built Wassers coming out of um, <laughs> Romania today. <laughs> Complete. I, I, all I could think of was Dracula. Um, so I don't think it's going to really affect the prices of these. Like, some people might be worried about... Um, so just throwing that out there, especially the LC, you know, they're only spinning at 640. I, I could see them gearing up and spitting out a whole bunch of L's and even like maybe like modifying these, like coming out with completely flat top versions or something. Um, whether or not they mess with the LC, because like I said, it's got a different bolt carrier spring and they'd have to make a different stock and all that stuff. Probably not, but I could definitely see them coming out and making a full 100% made American version. And I could see them coming out with like some really cool stuff kind of you know because you're not trying to keep it somewhat original anymore you gotta kind of a little more free range to do what you want i think they could spit out some really freaking awesome products I told you guys this video was done i lied i said all right this video is going to be under an hour we're now in an hour almost three minutes i lied i was going to show you the new case that these come in i also meant to go grab my original cardboard box that i got my first one in that is in storage, and I did not. So, just use your imagination. It was a plain cardboard box that said Mark Lamar. Had a really nice foam cutout for, you know, the gun and the mag and all that stuff. But that was that. But new, if you get one of these. Oh, boy. All right, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, let's see back a little bit not too much i want you all to see my toes you perverts no feet Do -do -do. Okay. guys sorry that might be all you're getting yeah no you saw my toe i'm not wearing socks okay so get this nice little bag you got the mark lamar and kind of the set me logo there and here we got the Mark Lamar logo. I wish it would have been kind of more of a, a darker green instead of this kind of zombie apocalypse green, but whatever. Um, it did not come with this patch. I had this patch, it comes with a big you know, Velcro square. Um, I, I got a couple free patches from them and I was looking at this and I'm like, what the hell can I fit that giant freaking patch on? And then the LC showed up and they had a big giant Velcro square just that size. So you can order one of these patches from Mark Lamar. They also have, oh, I don't know where they're at. They also got one that just has that logo um, that's really big in this size. So this is pretty much kind of your generic rifle case. You know, it follows the design of many of them. Whoa. Hi. 
Okay. So you got a little pocket here. Got a little pocket here for your mags, a little drawstring on it. Slightly bigger pocket. Drawstring, bigger compartment there though. And then this is just kind of mirrored to the other side with a little mag pouch and smaller pocket. Um, the handles here do not Velcro together, um, like on some bags, which not too big of a deal. I mean, it's it's free. It comes with a gun. I can't complain. Then you do have some Velcro straps in here. Um, let's see, we've got another compartment on the outside here. So over here, we got some elastic bands, I guess for mags. Um, got a little zipper pocket up here. Another one over here. This is a spot back there. You can maybe slide a handgun in or something. Um, and then the two compartments that could hold guns, like this one up here can hold handguns. Um, are we in frame? Nope. It does have a little locky zipper. And then the main zipper compartment where the rifle goes, that also has the little locking zipper compartment. Um, and of course all the goodies are thrown in there. You know, the instruction manual, the 2.0 instruction manual. You get the little kind of, uh, I didn't pull it out, did I? But the little Mark Lamar branded, uh, you know, cable trigger lock. Um, they gave us some different oil last time with the original ones. A little sample bottle. Now they're putting in little sample bottles of, uh, was it Slick 2000? Um, you get the one mag. And then you also get the, uh, the with the LC, you get the uh, flash hider if you end up SBRing it. So, there you guys go. Oh, man. Why did I buy so many freaking roller delays? You guys know how much of a pain in the butt these things are to clean and how dirty they get? Oh, well. All right, guys. That's my video on the Set Me LC. I'll eventually put out one going into details, and I'll take the bolts out and everything, kind of showing you the difference between the Gen 1 Gen 2. Might even do the same thing, getting more technical about the differences between the LC um, and the standard L. I just don't want to mess with pulling all that crap out um, and wasting time like I'm doing right now. Thank you guys for watching. I have no clue what my video will be out later this week, what it will be on. I do know my review video for next month will be on the Set Me C, or more specifically, the Century Arms. C308, I filmed that like a month ago. There's like snow trucks going up and down the road when I filmed it. Um, you'll get to see that next month. And then maybe we'll take a rest on all the roller delays. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, holy crap, you need to subscribe if you haven't already. All right, guys. Have a good one. Stay shiny.